Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is June the 14th, 2017. I do apologize firsthand for wearing a cap. The Lord wants me to have my head covered when I'm professing something in His name, a very important message actually today. Originally, I was going to just uh, position the camera towards the Bible, but right now, Brethren, I need you to look in my eyes. I need you to see how very serious this is. We came up to the mountains and normally I don't get cell coverage out here. I asked for confirmation on what was given to me last night and the Lord wants me to speak it forth. I'm going to follow it up with Galatians 5. It's extremely important, even if you have taken to Galatians 5, it is very important that you take to it again, specifically if you are in the body of Christ, which you'll understand soon why. Last night I was shown a member in the body of Christ I was given this person's name. I will not divulge that person's name. I have been praying on this and my heart, honestly. There's just no words. We know that it's written. We know that it's written that there will be workers of iniquity. I can say this person was not on my mind at all. I was showing this person was left behind. I'm coming on here to plead, to plead with the body of Christ. Many of us continue to read the Bible and we know what the Lord expects from us, but we don't adhere to it. In 1 Corinthians 12, the Lord specifically talks about how God himself, our Father, chose us as vessels in the body of Christ. For us, for us to be in unity, Today I'm coming on here as a plea. I'm begging you all. I'm begging you all to please read Galatians 5 as that's what the Lord led me to. He also led me to the verse of the day, which is, um, let me see here. You know, I'm not really good with these names, guys, so I apologize. I'm, I'm not an expert. Um, uh, Philippians chapter 3. However, he wants me to read the significance and the reason that he showed me this person in the body of Christ being left behind, the reasons for it. Now, I will, I will go to this person directly if that is what the Lord calls me to do. I will do it. I will do anything for him, regardless of the consequence. If I'm standing by myself at the end of this walk, it doesn't matter. I'm not here for views and likes. I'm here so that you hear what the Holy Spirit is revealing to us. And I'm begging you, body of Christ, please come in unity. Put down your pride, crucify the flesh. That's what the Lord is telling us in Galatians 5. I'm gonna go ahead with that reading. And I just ask you all, the saints, the body of Christ, everybody, please let's lift each other up in prayer. In chapter five, Galatians, excuse me, Galatians chapter five, and I'm gonna take my glasses off of this to read, or maybe not, that's too far, excuse me. Okay. Stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free 
and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. I'm going to intercede here. I do not know scriptures by heart. I did not realize that that was going to be in there. As God is my witness. I'm going to proceed. Excuse me. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Please listen to that. I'm going to read it again. <clears throat> you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will have no other mind but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment whoever he is and I brethren if I still preach circumcision why do I still suffer persecution then the offense of the cross has ceased I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off for you brethren have been called to liberty only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. He wants me to interject here. What he's seeing is a lot of people are saying, love thy neighbor as you do yourself. You're not doing it. You're not doing it. This was one of the reasons that person was left behind. The mouth said one thing, but the heart said another. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. I say then, walk in the Spirit, as he has been instructing me on this channel time and time again. I have re read Galatians 5, probably this is the seventh time. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, uh, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, 
dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not, will not, brothers and sisters, will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Again, I'm up in the mountains, and so there's an ATV coming here. Um, so I'm just going to wait till it passes by. Brothers and sisters, Please take a moment and read those two chapters that I gave you. Those were hand selected by the Lord himself. He told me to read those to you. He stirred it in my spirit so strongly. And oddly enough, I have cell coverage in a place I have not had cell coverage at. pleading with the body of Christ and the saints to please raise each other up in prayer. Put your differences aside. The lesson to all of this is we must crucify the flesh. We must crucify the flesh and we must, we must get right, right now. Please get on bended knee in Anna, which means to humble yourself before the Lord. Get on your knees and ask for forgiveness. I don't want any of us to be told we were workers of iniquity. I love you very much. God bless you.